Welcome, my name is Chloe and this video is to introduce you a software geomodeler. Geomodeler is a 3D geological modeling and geophysical inversion package. So what Geomodeler does? The software will quickly produce 3D model from sparse geological observations and the model will be easily updated by integrating more detailed data. The model can also be compared with geophysical observation by forward modeling and modified if necessary by stochastic inversion. This part is developed in another video available called Geomodeler Geophysics Introduction. In this video, to show you the basis on how to build a geological model with Geomodeler 2012, I will go through the key steps of the building of a project called Bookman Syncline realized for Rio Tinto in Western Australia. So when you open Geomodeler, this is the first interface of the software. I would like to show you first how to create a project from the very beginning. So if, if you go on the project in the main menu, you can either browse an old uh, project, so you, you can see here the list of the old uh, opened project or create a new one. When you click on new, this window pop-ups. In this window, you're going to decide the name of your project. You can put the author and few description of your project. The most important is to set the projection of your geological model. This projection will have to be exactly the same for every geological data you're going to bring to build your model. The next step is to define the limit of your geological model, the extent of the box you're going to build your 3D geological model into. We can put, for example, 2 km on y direction and 1 km on x direction. When it's done, you just click on OK. You can see over here that Geomodeler built an empty box with the limit you just entered. But before start any modeling, you need to either download the DTM if it's available, or define the topography surface as an horizontal surface. So if the DTM is available, you can download with this window. Otherwise, you can design and decide that your topography surface will be flat and at, for example, sea level. I click on OK. On the left hand side, you've got your surface topography in yellow, and you can see it as well in your right hand side in your 3D box. So that was to show you how to start a model from the beginning. Now I'm going to open the Bookman uh, Syncline project that we already started to build. You can see that we have already few points digitized. So and we had in this model the DTM available. So this is a grid of the DTM available. And if I put a bit of vertical exaggeration on the 3D viewer, you can start to feel the shape of the DTM digital terrain model at the end of your 3D box over here and here. So if I turn on the grid, you can see that for this model we have already started to build some formation. So you've got the list of the formations entered in the model. So how to do that? You go on Geology, Formation, Create. You put a name and assign a color to the formation. When it's done, you have to define a stratigraphic pile. Here you visualize your stratigraphic pile. And under geology, you can design over here the relationship between all your formations and design your stratigraphic pie. So you can see on the surface topography, we have already a few points digitized. Those points have been digitized with a geological map we had available in our hand. So we bought this geological map like I'm doing right now. Any image JPEG is possible to bring into Geomodeler. You need three points georeferenced that you can enter the coordinate in this window. When it's done, 
you just click on OK and GeoBundler will import this image into your surface topography at the right location. So if I turn on and turn off the map, you can see that the point already traced are related to this geological map. So you can see we have two types of points. We have contact data and orientation data for each formation of a model. And that's all what we need to compute a 3D geological model. So if I click here, this window will list all the geological information we have currently in her model. And if I click on OK, the modeler will compute the geological model. So it, it's done, it's finished. It was really quick. Now we need to plot this geological model computed, for example, in her 2D view. So you can see so far we've got some only few formations. You can recognize the same line shape. And if I put the map on top of my model computed, you can recognize this incline below the quaternary cover. So this map is really complex and it will have a model will have to be improved to fit better the reality of the field. But first let's compute 3D shape of her first geological model. And you can see we can recognize the simple model we have so far. So the principle of GeoModeler is to incorporate more and more geological features as the data are coming. So if you look at the geological map, you can see that we have a fault network. And the next step is for us is to digitize those faults. So we've got two types of faults in this map. We've got infinite fault that go through all the area of a model. And if I zoom here, the finite fault that stops before the end of a model. So what I'm going to do is open another step of her project over here, below. And that's it. You can see, you can recognize the Bookman uh, project if I plot the geological map. So what we've done, we have uh, created two, fold, uh, two type of faults, sorry, A1, A2, and B1, B2. And we have started to digitize the fault A1. The fault A1 in red are infinite faults. They cross all over the project. But the faults B2 are finite faults here. And you can see the fault, this one, stop before the end of the project. So to digitize the fault B2, I just take my pen here over here. I draw a few points along the fault. And now I have to attribute those points to my fault. So I click over here, select B2, and then I can associate to those points a deep angle, which I'm going to consider this fault as a vertical fault, so 90 degree. When it's done, I can click on Create and Close. So now my points have been attributed to my B2 fault. So if I turn off my geological map over here, yep, you can see they became orange. So the next step when you create a fault is to define the link between your fault and the geology formation. So if the geological formation is going to be affected by your fault, you need to tick in this window the series of your geological formations. If it's ticked, the formation will be affected by the fault. As the orange B2 fault is a finite fault, we need to add, um, tell to GeoModeler that this fault isn't infinite. So you can select a very finite, and you then you have to attribute a an horizontal radius, a vertical radius, and an influence radius in kilometers. When it's done, you can cl click on OK, and all the parameters of your fault are done. We can now compute a model including a fault. So you can see in my compute model window, I've got my series of faults over here. I select everything and click on OK. And my new model has been computed. I can plot only my fault in my 3D shape. And you can see my the starting of my fault network. The rate infinite fault and the orange finite fault. 
I can also plot the rest of my geological model and my formation as surfaces. So you can see my fold going through my syncline shape. I can put a bit of vertical exaggeration. That's it. Well, so we, we started to digitize few folds. But if I go back to my geological map, you can see that there is a lot of more on the east part of the model, of the map, sorry. And there is a few other formation that we need to digitize as well. So the, if I open a step further of the project of the Bookman uh, syncline and plot my geological map again on top over here in my surface topography. So on the east part of the geological map, we have digitized a group of folds in green over here and a network started to be a bit more accomplished. When you look at the geological map, you can see that you've got still a lot of formation that we haven't digitized yet. And I would like to point your attention on this tiny area, the, the PLTUK formation. This formation is actually on top of the folded series. Unfortunately, in the geological map, it's covered by quaternary sediment. So we won't be able to use this geological map to digitize the contact uh, between the formation between this formation and the rest of the series. Fortunately for this project, we had drill hole information. So the first step is to create the formation and add the formation to the stratigraphic pile. So we put the formation on top of the folded series over here and we commit when it's done and close. We can check a stratigraphic pile over here and you can see the PLT UK is on top of the series. So now we can import a drill holes data to build this formation. So you need to import three files, the cola, which is the location of the head of your drill hole, the survey and the geology. And if you follow the step of the import tool, you can easily bring any drill holes data into your GeoModeler model. So you click on finish and when it's done, you get a report and you can see in your Explorer menu the three drill holes that you just imported. So you can edit the drill holes and you can see the new formation is inside your drill holes. So GeoModeler is going to use those three drill holes to build the geological model and build this formation. So we can now compute a model with, you can see, the drill holes. So that's it, a model has been computed. So if I plot and project my drill holes under this cross-section, which is over here, go back to the cross-section, I can project my drill holes in this section. That's it. They're quite shallow. That's two shallow drill holes we've got in this section. I can plot the drill holes in 3D. So if I put a bit of vertical exaggeration to see them and make them a bit bigger, you can see your three drill holes that your mother will use to build your PLTUK formation. So now I can plot the model I just computed in my cross section. And you can see that the new, f uh, new model has this new formation and the formation is following exactly the drill holes limit of the PLTUK formation. So if I plot in my uh, topography surface, that's it. We've got this new formation that wasn't there before and it has only been created from drill holes information, nothing else. So if you look at the model, you can see that we have a lot of more info, uh, formations to create uh, at the edge of the folding. So if I open a new uh, project, I mean a step further of the project, over here, this is the final step of the project. Obviously a project is never finished, you can al always bring uh, data as they come to you. but. This one is where we stopped to work on this project. You can see that we created 
cross section, a lot of cross section. We also put more formations, all the formation we had in a stratigraphic pile originally. And we imported as well a lot of map. So you can basically bring any image or map that will help you to digitize the limit of your formations. So if I had the others and keep only the geological map here. So that's the final uh, model, I would say. And you can see that in one of the cross section, we also put an image of a cross section that also helped us to put some contact data and build a geological model. So we have also a lot of more uh, drill holes with, if I edit one of them, more geological formation. And if I show them in 3D with vertical generation, this is a group of drill holes that has been used to create the geological model. So we brought everything we had as well as contact and orientation data that we digitize in the surface uh, topography. So we've got the fault network, which is now uh, completed, and we've got all this contact and orientation data. Everything served us to compute a nice geological model. So if I compute my model and then I plot in 3D with a fine resolution of it, so I push forward the quality of the resolution to I and click on OK, I can build a nice geological model result. So you've got a time scale over here that will tell you when the building of your shape is finished. And if you wait long enough, depending on the capacity of your machine, you can end up with this type of 3D model. So you can play with in 3D, so you can obviously put some vertical exaggeration. And you recognize uh, the folding in 3D. You can, uh, as well as turn it around, you can make some formation transparent. So for example, let's put this one a bit transparent so you can see the fault going through the formation. So it can take a bit of time because that's a high quality model. But when it's done, you can turn it around and you see the fault network going through this formation and affect these formations. You can also hide other formation as you wish. And basically that will help you to think about your geological model. We interpreted it in 3D. And if you're not happy with the result you've got in 3D, you still can uh, change some contact and orientation data, modify the information you've got in your topography surface to make it um, more realistic to what you see on the field. So thank you for your intention and I hope this video will help you to start with GeoModeler 2012 and create your first 3D geological model.